sorry that I don't speak uh, Italian very well, um, but my English is better. Um, I'm Osher, I'm the manager and a partner uh, in Oren Israel. Um, I'm manager of the cybersecurity and technology uh, department. Um, I'm 30 years old, a cybersecurity expert, uh, working worldwide uh, and a consultant to the Israeli Ministry uh, of Defense. Little bit about uh, our company. Um, uh, Oren, is, um, Oren Israel and Oren uh, in the global is a big firm that uh, usually uh, supply services like consulting, taxing solution, audit accounting, uh, corporate and finance, legal. Uh, and in the end, in my area is the cyber, secu uh, cyber security and uh, uh, IT. Uh, so as uh, Simon uh, mentioned to the uh, OASP and uh, I will be a little bit uh, expand. Um, OASP is the Open Web Application Security Project, uh, is non-profit uh, community. Um, it's collaborate to a lot of uh, security researchers uh, and uh, security experts uh, that feed the community with uh, a lot of information about attacks and, and what happened news about uh, cybersecurity. Uh, OASP known uh, usually uh, when clients came and, and told us, uh, let's do the pen test or, or the solution by OASP uh, top 10 method methodology. Uh, so they talk about this community and OASP known about the rate of the known attack, uh, attacks that they rating uh, every time. Um, a few uh, every three a uh, few uh, years, they uh, rate the known attack and the most uh, most common attack in the web application area, in the mobile application area, and in the API area. Um, here we are talking about the API security. So I took the top ten um, top ten list of API security attacks that you can see in the in this uh, presentation. And I summarized it uh, to four attacks that or four technique that relevant for this, uh, this list. So I divided to technical information, automation, parameter abuse and endpoint abuse. This is the most common attacks that um, that filtered from the 10 to the to the uh, this list. So let's talk about technical information. Usually, developers uh, are forget to remove the the API help that uh, let us a lot of documentation and information about how the procedure and and the uh, endpoints working. What is the parameters and what. APIs and endpoints we, we have in our uh, program. So usually it's recommended to remove this, uh, this documentation from, from the API uh, and not expose it to, to everyone unless this is a public information. The next one is uh, is also when we are going to send some API uh, request to the server to the backend, and the backend give us a lot of information that we don't really need to know or see as a client as a as a as a user. So it's recommended to remove or to hide uh, information that's not relevant to the, the to the client and let him to see only the, the information are relevant for him. Uh, in this, uh, in this uh, picture, you can see uh, the legit request that give us the information about the ID address and everything are relevant to our client. And in the other side, you can see the attacker information uh, that give us information about the admin, if he's admin or not admin, uh, and more information about the, the, the uh, that not relevant to us. The other, the other uh, subject is the automation. Um, 
one of the big problem about API security is uh, to avoid a ma massive requests to the client to the to the sorry uh, from the client to the server because a API not always are uh, implement with UI with user interface and the anti automation mechanism is not a captcha usually in API security so we need to try to find the the best uh, solution to our specific endpoint and try to find how to to solve it in our endpoint uh, and in this case i believe israel will talk about the automation and bot in the in the his uh, presentation but this is the the best solution to use third party uh, third party device or, or solution to to solve the automation in api <clears throat> about parameter reviews uh, it's mean that what, one other problem is that when when we are sending information uh, by the parameter you can see in the example user id what happens if I change in this user ID? What will happen? I will get information about other user. My authorization is give me the, the, the ability to do it. So the best solution is usually to prevent a authorization bypass. It mean I, I, I'm the user will see only what is relevant for me as a user. And I will not supposed to be information about other users. Uh, and in the other end, uh, there is uh, some parameter abuse that the information is not what's common um, or what the application supposed to go to got. For example, in this picture, you can see the uh, the legit uh, request. The user ID is numbers and everything is relevant. What but what happened if I will send a uh, more more uh, characters like. Uh, space or, or information like uh, SQL injection or tags or something like that, how the server will uh, will answer us and if it will uh, will get us to, to able to, to run any exploitation on this vulnerability that uh, the, the, the server are not doing input validation. So when we talk about API, Yes, the, the best the best way to, to handle uh, attacks like parameter abuse is first of all to do a, to do a input validation and see what we are sending is what we need to, to got. And in the other end, what happened when we send in the, the right uh, syntax or right uh, um, uh, characters that's supposed to, to, to come, but it's not my authorization. So as I said, Israel will talk about the, the attacks that relevant to input validation, like XSS, SQL injection, LFI, and more injections like that. Uh, and this is some of problems that happen in API security. About endpoint abuse, uh, oh, I did uh, double double uh, uh, abuse in the in the presentation, but. Now we are not talking, uh, talking about the, the parameter. Now we're talking about the, uh, the endpoint. In this, uh, in this case, we can see that the endpoint is 362. It's probably a point on, on the company ID or something like that. What happened if I, uh, I'm changing it and now I'm in the other tenant of other client? So, this is API issue that we need to, to try to solve uh, and to see that we are not only looking for users from my company and information from my company, I can see information of users about other companies or any, any case like that. So we need always to do input validation also in parameter and also in the, in the, uh, in the API endpoints. Uh, in some in some cases, as as I talked in the in the first uh, in the first uh, subject about technical information, when we found uh, information like uh, like other APIs endpoints that I didn't know that are really exist, 
and I found it in the recommendation of the help uh, API. I will try as a as hacker, I will try to access all this API with, with authentication, without authentication, with low uh, authorization. And I will try to, to get more information or do some procedure are not relevant for me. Uh, and this is the, the case that we need to try to solve as developer or as security uh, department in our company. Uh, try to to solve this problem, uh, and sometimes uh, it's more easy to solve it with third-party device or, or solution like Iswal will mention later. Uh, in this example, you can see a legit uh, request that uh, a HTTP request of post, and in the other hand, you can see the attacker change the the post to delete how we will handle with with this uh, changing so this is some problem are more relevant in about api security and i think these four subjects are uh, summarized the top 10 uh, api of uh, api uh, vulnerabilities that us mentioned um if you have any question about cybersecurity, uh, this is my information and uh, Israel, it's yours. Thanks, uh, Osher. Thank you very much for uh, your good presentation. Uh, it's an uh, honor for me to be after you uh, as a professional person who can do this, all these hacking and these tools and, and uh, organizations. So you see this from the, from the attacking side, from the simulation of attacks. I usually see it from the defense side. And I'm very happy to be here and thanks uh, Tag Distribution for hosting us. I will take you in this call uh, to the next level. So I won't talk about solution. I want to show you a real live system. And we're actually going to do real attack simulation on the cloud. Don't worry. It's, we're not harming no customers. It's a completely isolated environment. And we can do simulation of attacks to show how we can actually uh, uh, impact those APIs. So before I share my screen, just, just for L7 Defense, API security company, um, headquarters from Israel, working with Tag Distribution in Italy, uh, working across the world with partners. Uh, we provide a software solution to uh, organizations, help them secure their APIs. And I want to say that the securing APIs contains a few levels. So it's first of all, visibility. You have to know exactly which APIs you have there. Second is to analyze risk in real time. And third is to give active blocking, stop the attack in real time. Don't let it uh, harm your environment. So we talk about types of attacks can happen, how it actually can impact the organizations. And now my turn is to show a, a live demo. Can you see my dashboard? Yes, okay. So, uh, so I will show you in several uh, layers, how does this look? First of all, as a manager, CISO wants to know exactly what's his risk. He wants to know what, uh, how many domains you have, uh, how many endpoints are there, where's the sensitive data? Because we all know the sensitive data, that's where the, the hackers are going for. They're going to try, you know, get those uh, PII data of customers, of uh, PIF, for example, of managers, etc., And then going, you have request response and you can understand exactly what you have in organization. So we're gonna look here in a few tiers. So the first thing we'll talk about is discovery, full discovery of all the APIs you have, then types of attacks. So we categorize them in a few categories. One is web application firewall. It's the content base examples that Osho talked about. Then we have business logic attacks. It's broken object level authorization. We will have here also today, we're gonna to talk about a uh, bot attacks and DDoS attacks. Besides that, we'll give you real uh, use cases from customers along the way. So here's a, a management dashboard, but you actually say, okay, I wanna know which APIs do I have in the system. And for this, you have here a system that tells you automatically maps you all the APIs you have and starts to learn them in real time. So we, we put a domain called uh, demo L7 testing. It has 24 endpoints, 20 sensitive arguments in a request, 25 in response templates, and 
hypermatch percentage of coverage of no, we know all the existing uh, APIs here. So with screen, the means we have full visibility. Another thing here is when was this first API initiated? Which domain was initiated? It's very important because you can keep tracking on changes. Last update was 22, uh, 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 222 or six days ago. Okay, so long time ago was the last update of the system. We're here, there's still updates. Second ago, three seconds ago, the system is still learning. That's why these domains are not yet uh, green. It's not mean we don't have a full understanding on the traffic coming there, but where we have enough data, the system is already up and running. So for example, we take this, uh, a do uh, this uh, domain and then the system starts to catalog it and do clustering of all of it. So understands, for example, we see a get inventory user cart. Okay, someone wants to go see his cart of a shopping cart online. So it has 54, 58 arguments, sensitive data. Let's look inside. Okay, last update of this one is two days ago. So someone did a change last two days ago. We want to see how can this impact. What we see here, so the system automatically knows how to categorize, categorize um, sensitive data. So for example, we find that it has here something that looks like a PII name, okay? A list looks like a, a, a name of a person. So that system automatically is put here sensitive. This means for security managers to know where to focus because where is actually the risk can happen is where the sensitive data can leak out. Then you have, for example, a um, another could be first name, last name, uh, can be here um, additional, a, a additional information about the name and object ID. So this could be the, the, the ID of the person. And the system automatically maps what it has on it. So it has uh, how many charts is it, which tags it has it, and et cetera. So the system knows exactly to map all of this automatically. So it saves lots of time. So we give the visibility of that. And then of course you can see if this uh, access token there are all in place. So the system continues in learning for each one of those, uh, each one of those, uh, I would say endpoints, the system learns. And again, here you have the products, users, uh, shop. This is actually a, 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 um, a shopping a website. A, we see here a login flow that has also username and password. So the system knows automatically to, set, to identify this is a, a this is a sensitive data because it's a password. Sometimes username can be sensitive. And if I decide I want to make it sensitive, I just I can click on it and then call it make it sensitive as well. So you can change here every uh every every part of it. You can just say okay I want it to be sensitive, and from now it will be sensitive, and the system will continue monitoring as a sensitive uh, argument. So after we map everything, the map happens in the first day, in a few first hours, and then the system is up and running. But they will continue to learn because we, as we saw in the beginning, these uh, APIs are always changing. We have customers who change the APIs three times a day. So you have the, the, the team working to change and update the API to upgrade them all the time, but you want to know in, in the back that's still keeping secure. This means that all of the, the rules are there, no data will be leaked, no changes of, of uh, management can happen there. Someone logging as a user and trying to access as a manager. So all of these changes are being monitored all the time. So it's an ongoing system that maps everything. So that's what we talked about discovery. After we talk about discovery, then we can have all kinds of attacks coming in. So let's start with the classic attacks, all the web application firewall API. What does this mean? This means we have attacks that are content-based and they, we're a company of like L7 Defense and other APS security companies. What we do is actually we build a security per API, not in generally like a WAF. A WAF usually traditional is a general solution, gives you signatures and IP table, and that's how you work. Everything else has to be uh, manually. When you're talking about a, API security tools, they say, okay, we build it from bottom up. We take every API, we investigate what's good, what's bad for it. And then afterwards we have the whole approach for the entire organization because we came bottom up. It's a very big difference and much more secure environment than rather giving one security and trying to fit it for all the APIs. And every, every point you build it from bottom up. 
So here you have a live dashboard of Wafa tax, as we call it. You have normal traffic of 107, uh, seven uh, quarantined or four, four quarantined. This means that we are suspicious and we put them in quarantine for some time till we actually investigate them. If we look here at uh, types of uh, threats we talked about, so Osho mentioned the SQL injection. So we have here in the last, in the last day, we had uh, 1,400 uh, evidence of LFI, 888 of SQL injection, 311 uh, XSS, and such a uh, command inox, uh, XML, PHP injection was only one. And you also can start seeing where, is it, where are they coming from? So we see here, uh, we see here Germany, uh, we see uh, United States. And every, every of those alerts has its own line and has an ID, okay? So every alert creates a new ID in the system and you can start analyzing it. So here's the headline, we're gonna look into it. So you have, for example, number of, number of alert, uh, to geography location, IP, category. Now we start mapping in the category, uh, arguments, tempered, uh, and then we have here where it came, which domain, which endpoint, what was the details, request header, accept, and this is actually was a, what was there. Uh, we see here XML, Q uh, equals uh, 0 0.9, and that was actually request. But then, of course, we start looking into it. Okay, let's see what was this risk. So you can click on it, and actually see uh, the argument tempering and see what it was. So we explain also exactly. Uh, so we also explain uh, exactly what's happening here. And uh, uh, that doesn't, for example, here, technical words found doesn't match the baseline. Okay, so it doesn't match the baseline. So we have all kinds of categories where we want to do. Um, so here we have alert type is transaction. And uh, what was actually done here was request blocked. So we have here again, the sample of what was it? So we see example, what, what happened here, uh, which access endpoints uh, came inside and the uh, system will see it was kept alive. And then we have here exactly all the relative domains that try to do the same thing. So we see here a very, very, I would say sophisticated attack. You see how the IPs are rotating. They're changing all the time. Many types of IPs try to do a similar attack with similar uh, changes inside. So you have here more examples. Uh, how does it work? So this is exactly, we go back to the screen. So we saw this is like one example, argument tempering. Of course, we can say, okay, I want to see uh, only types of attacks for like, for example, LFI. So I look at this, I can, of course, go this uh, screen and see here, um, local find inclusion found. Uh, so this is a restricted file. You're not allowed to get into there. And again, we can see many types of IPs trying to do the same thing, same request. And this is, we see it's from Brazil for specifically. And we saw, so this was recommended to block. Now you can say, um, I wanna know, for example, uh, this IP that did this attack, what else did it try to do? So I can look per IP. Not every, I can look per alert. I can look per IP. So we see the same IP is trying to do many times in the last six and a half hours, uh, trying to do a, a, a same type of attacks. Every time we see it, it's something else. So it's actually trying to find the way to hack the system. So you see, every time it changes the parameters, it puts a little change and it's running these endless uh, scripts of attacks to actually try to penetrate the system till it will be blocked or till it will be succeed. So this is what we are able to find. So we're able to, to uh, find a IP, say, what is it trying to see? Try to cluster it. And that's how you get much more clear view of those API attacks coming on it. Now, if we go back uh, to the dashboard, so we saw examples, we saw again, uh, territories, and you can, you can actually, uh, and also lax example here for SQL injection. Let me look at the last one. So what we have here, so uh, uh, so it's of course SQL command found, and uh, we can see it uh, search, uh, category ID, and a user password. You see, you can see inside. Can you see here? So I'm showing inside. You actually see what the, what they're trying to do. Again, um, of course, we also highlighted it. Uh, SQL injection the four thousand we see here, and of course we stopped this attack all the relevant IPs, and that's how we get a full view of the system. We can, so I said, we can look at about, we can look from the alert side, 
So we can see, uh, we want to analyze uh, from type of countries, from type of alerts. You can start investigating from wherever you want these uh, type of attacks. Then you can say, okay, which IPs did it? So now you can look from the IP side. So you get the full clarity from the most IP. So we can see like uh, 500 from Germany, uh, Brazil is in 800, uh, UK 730 and others. So you can see exactly where is those attack coming from. It's from the IP side. So you see from the attack side and from the IP side. And of course here you can always do exclusion and build some policies. So if, a, for example, this your system works like this, you always can do any exclusion you want, accept any of those. And of course, you also can do uh, a create your own policies. So whoever wants the workers' hands can always create more policies for that. This is the, what we talk about the one-time attack. Then you have bot attacks. So we go with bot attacks. You can see, a, but I want to give some examples of real use cases of bot attacks. And we can talk about the largest telcos in the world where uh, we found that they, they were doing credential stuffing. They were running stolen database of username and password and trying to access the systems. And we were able to block many of those attacks. So bots are very, very smart. I'll give you a very example of smart attack that bots do. Uh, one of the apps to order food um, came to us with a problem. What was the problem? The customers are opening new accounts, but they're not buying. So uh, marketing said, wow, good, many new accounts have been open. And revenue said, okay, there's no revenue coming from these new accounts. And at the end, they got an email from the credit card company saying, we're going to stop uh, giving you ability to, uh, to charge credit cards on your website. And that was because hackers were opening fake accounts with bots in order to validate stolen credit cards. So that was a fully automated fraud system. They were opening fake accounts, then putting a stolen credit card there. And if the account would be open, this means the credit card is still valid. And then they would go charge the credit card. So the credit card company found exactly that they were using this platform to do this. So it was a very sophisticated attack. And, and these are types of attacks that very smart bots can do. And to understand them, like what type of them, what's the risk of each one of them? So you want to see, uh, you can see for uh, types of both in the numerous, uh, and if there was too much usage of them, and you can actually monitor each one of them, and again to see uh, what was the impact of that bot. And each one of the bots, you can see, for example, going back to the bot, you can see uh, uh, bot rules, bot settings, because sometimes bots are good giving you a more complex uh, scenario. Um, a government give ability to people to uh, ask a question and get an answer. For example, I can ask, uh, is this a company uh, valid? Uh, or is this company is, uh, it, it would say, um, still you know, in business? So you can put the number of the company, the ID of the company, and you will get an answer. So this is the service the government is giving you about companies, okay? So someone was running a script and he ran the entire list of all the companies in that country and he got the response for all of them. So he was running it, was, uh, was changing uh, IPs all the time, coming under the radar. In a few days, it took all the entire data and it sold it. And now it starts selling it to other companies. Do you want to have all the data of all your comp of the companies in that country? And... The government came to us as we found this to them. We told them, listen, we see here very uh, uh, it was a suspicious activity. And this activity, we were able to find it where it came under every threshold. These bots are very smart today. They know how much is the rate limit in order not to pass it. So how much is the rate limit per IP, per time? They know exactly this is how they test in the beginning. And then they can just, once they know how it works, they can take all the data outside. Some uh, business logic attacks uh, where they're much more sophisticated, um, where you want people can actually log a, log from one place to see to another place. And you can see uh, endpoint tempering, a content violation. Is this all of these examples? So again, every example you can always look in, understand what it's trying to do, which anomalies it has here of a not user, of a normal user, because business logic attacks can be a legitimate request, legitimate response, but the whole correlation between is not good. As Osha mentioned, that can be someone logging in as a, a David, 
change the parameter and you're gonna see the uh, Christina uh, data from the bank. This is how you actually can, these type of attacks are actually types of very sophisticated because no one could tell you it's bad because the request is legitimate, the response is legitimate, but the connection between them is not legitimate. So these are examples where, um, where the business logic attacks are the most sophisticated and you actually can find evidence for them inside the system. Okay, and now let's say DDoS, I don't need to explain too much about DDoS, I will actually demonstrate the DDoS attack. So give me this, uh, uh, here I'm gonna do here a demonstration of attack. Um, let's do, do we have still time? I think so, right? Yes, we have time. Okay. Um, attacking simulator. Now I want to have some uh, uh, types of attacks in real time. SQA. Let's do some uh, DDoS. In, uh, DDoS with uh, five vectors, much more, more complicated one. Uh, let's do uh, also XSS. And uh, okay, so let's keep these ones and let's do. Let's show how it looks when you have under attack. So this is we now we're going to run. We have these servers who create in real time attacks, fully randomated. We don't know which attack, how it's gonna come from which IPs, everything, we're using the best tools. We developed our own tools. We're not allowed to sell them, it's illegal, but we developed our own tools uh, to hack systems. And here, here is the system that can actually, we can show you how does it impact. Okay, we see something peak in the traffic. Peak in traffic starts from, uh, we were between 200, we get into 700. A request, you see this is in, in uh, seconds. Uh, we see types of threats, amounts of threats happening in now, and look what's happening. Our system is starting to get many colors of alerts. Um, here, we have a lot of attacks happening now. We don't know, okay, from UK, I see it coming from UK. Let's see United States even, uh, and more. And the system is already starting to investigate it and started to blocking them. So now you're gonna see now, not only the system was able to identify this peak of traffic, it actually starts to create these rules to block them in real time. So look how many rules and more and more are being created every second. Every second, the system creating more and more real-time signatures to block those attacks. So the, the normal traffic will continue coming, but the bad attacks will be stopped. And you can see here uh, a, how many we quanted. You see the amounts are still going down. We're able to uh, start getting control on those attacks. Still, the system is severity is high because we're still under attack. The system is recognizing we're still under attack, still has to fight those attacks. And we see here many types of different uh, attacks are coming in. We don't have no clue which, can, what, which attack can come in. And these are real time how the system is still surviving. The system is not crashing, very sophisticated attacks, and the system is still running. So I will, uh, I will conclude in, in a few uh, sentences. So this is a dashboard of L7 defense. This is a real time dashboard. We simulate attacks. This is where you can actually see all the entire APIs you have, which type of risk you have. And from here, different teams and organizations can get the value. If it's a CISO, can get in a high, high, uh, high level a dashboard, understand in real time, where is the attacks, how many attacks are happening now. And then you can get a security risk analytics teams, developer teams get information, Automatically, automatically reports go to organization, and of course, everything goes uh, connects to the same sock of the customer. So, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to stop my share, and we're going to open for uh, questions. Thank you, Israel, for uh, for the demo. Uh, I believe it was uh, very interesting. Uh, we got uh, some questions. So I will I will read it to you, Israel. First question is to you. Uh, can API security replace a, a, a WAF? Trusting for me, Italian, of course. Okay. So thank you very much for this question. Um, API security is today is a new WAF. The WAF was securing web application firewalls today. And 92% from our records are of all web traffic information are API based. So companies, yes, are replacing WAF solutions with a smart solution called API security that has inside a WAF compliance a checkbox, including signatures and others. So this is a part of a system that uh, customers can get. So the answer would be a yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question. Um, 
to Osher. Uh, how can we test uh, SAS and on-prem APIs? So usually in uh, our company, we are testing uh, for the clients uh, API, SaaS and on-prem uh, when we are doing the web application and API application uh, pen test. Um, there is a few, uh, few uh, scenarios that you can do. You can do a manual penetration test. You can use automation tools to, to do a penetration test for, for the API. And I don't think there is a, it's relevant if it's SaaS on, on or on-prem, it's still API. And uh, for us, if it's uh, implement with UI, so we're doing web application with the full UI uh, penetration test uh, to the API. And if the UI is not implemented, so usually I'm ask, we, are, we are asking from the clients uh, to send the postman with all the API requests and uh, then we are doing a penetration test on this vector. 